Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. You're joining us today for a SHOT Show preview, where we get to take a look at some of the awesome new CRKT designs, brand new for 2022. Let's check them out. All right, first knife up this year is actually got revealed in a different format a little bit in December last year. And now we have the more standard full production version of the CEO Compact. The CEO Flipper from CRKT, which there's an all black version this year, now available, 50 bucks, was one of the most successful knives, uh, new knife introductions last year. It was a crazy bestseller. So bringing it down to a slightly more compact version with a sub three inch blade makes a ton of sense. Uh, we've got a 2.6 inch blade here, in fact. So it brings it under that three inch limit that uh, some people have to live under. But even if not, it's just a more compact package overall, as the name would suggest. Uh, now on the full size, the CEO flipper, uh, the original CEO, of course, had a thumb stud. Then they came out with the flipper, the CEO compact, I imagine is just going to be flipper only. I don't imagine we'll see a thumb stud version of this. But anyway, moving on, 45 bucks for the compact. You've got a 4116 stainless steel blade, 2.6 inches, like I mentioned, that excellent mini Quaken styling going on. We've still got GFN handles, but these might be kind of my favorite GFN handles I've ever seen. Interesting color going on. It's kind of a blue gray. There's a little bit of a it's hard to even describe what the texture is on it, but if you didn't know that it was synthetic, it honestly could pass for aluminum. And I'm not even making that up. Really, really cool. It's got a little bit like, think of like a Sebenza. It's got that kind of bead blasted texture. It's a little bit like that. Yeah, it really does pass for aluminum, especially in this color. Very, very cool. You've still got a little bit of radius to those scales. It's just shorter than the original. Same tail end treatment. You've got the quote unquote pill crusher back and a tail mounted deep carry pocket clip, which makes this reversible as well. Love, love that style of a deep carry pocket clip on pretty much any knife I've ever seen it. Really cool. Still got a liner lock, still have IKBS uh, ball bearings, I believe. Yes, it just doesn't have the IKBS logo on it, so I had to check. Blade still disappears completely into the handle. You've just got the flipper tab sticking out, flips open really nicely, tuned in maybe even a little bit better than the original CEO flippers. I know some folks thought that might have been a little bit fiddly, but these really nice. We've got a great new size. The materials are looking really good. Just a great smaller executive style gentleman's knife. Win, 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 win. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got the black version as well this year. Uh, this comes with OS 8 steel, just like the CEO flipper from last year, but you've got the black coating a little bit. Nope, just black. I thought it might have had a hint of stone wash on it, but it doesn't look to be the case. Black on the GFN handles here, black liners, black hardware at the back so that everything's a lot more subtle. Now, both those knives, of course, uh, were designed by Richard Rogers. We've got another Richard Rogers now along a very similar vein to the CEO. This is the SACE, S-E-I-S, the, uh, the number six, uh, coming in about $45 right now. Now the styling on this knife, obviously it, it's kind of a cross between the CEO series and the symmetry knife uh, from Richard Rogers last year. You've got a lot of the same details in the way the pocket clip is done, the way the backspacer slash bail is executed and the inlays there. Coloration's a bit different, of course, but similar family lineage right there. 3.3 uh, inch blade, uh, 4116 stainless again, held up next to the CEO flipper. You can see the dimensions are just about identical. L same uh, overall length, same handle and blade length essentially, but a little bit taller blade than the CEO. So as a result of that, well, actually, I haven't checked the uh, blade thicknesses. They look they have pretty much the same between the two. So you might get a little bit more efficient cutting in certain materials with the SACE. I'm talking minor degrees of difference, of course. But this is another really cool option for a CEO flipper alternative. 
Liner lock is inset into the uh, stainless steel or aluminum handles. Stainless steel handles, which it's not as heavy as you might think for stainless steel. So they did a good job there. But inset liner lock, another knife that folds up completely into the handle. Really nice flipping action going on there. Uh, not difficult at all. Now the inlays are glass reinforced nylon, but they look like leather with the, uh, the texture you've given there. And I don't know if it's sort of a, I don't know what, psychosomatic thing or not, but because it looks so much like leather, it almost feels like it if you're not thinking. Yeah, you can kind of scratch at it and it does feel like plastic, but not so much when you just pick it up. That's kind of cool. But really cool to see yet another executive styled gents knife from CRKT and Richard Rogers. I say gents knife, but kind of gentsy anyway. It's not like super, super gentsy. Uh, however, let's continue with kind of these uh, executive styled knives here. We have the Ken Onion designed facet flipper this year, coming in at just under $50 right now. And Thomas, it's your favorite blade shape. Cheese name. Really? You have an opportunity to call something a reverse Tonto and you don't take it? Gotta keep you on your toes. <sighs> but anyway, D2 blade steel here, uh, not a, a 4116 stainless. So that's gonna be a nice upgrade for some folks out there. Really cool looking blade, stainless steel handles, frame lock with a almost deep carry pocket clip, but it is folded over quite nicely. And this is one of the assisted opening knives, uh, which comes with the new assisted opening system they debuted last year, which as far as assists go, especially at this price is really nice. It is very effective on the blade opening action, but it doesn't require as much force to close as some assisted opening knives out there are. And that's kind of one of the knocks against assists in general. This guy really does get around it. Uh, it's a torsion bar system, similar to Kershaw's Speed Safe, but with their own spin on it since that patent is now uh, expired as of last year. But just watch, just a little, just barely touching it to pull it back in. So not a fight at all. Now with the kind of materials configuration right here, it's pretty cool in that you can blend uh, between worlds with this. There's a bit of gentlemanly qualities to it for sure, but it feels really solid. There's a little bit of weight to the handles, not an abnormal amount, but it's not a lightweight knife, but it feels like you could push it hard. Plus, if you're a fan of something like, for instance, a Benchmade 940 Osborne, but it's beyond your budget, this is one of the few, if not only, kind of budget-minded competitors I can think of out there. So it has a similar vibe and a similar mission in that it can kind of cross between worlds just a little bit. Really cool. All right, next up, and a bit of a surprise to us here, we've got a new slip joint this year from CRKT and a really well done slip joint as well. They kind of surprised us with how well they did. Uh, 32 bucks for this guy and looks great. It's, what's the name of it? Uh, the Venandi, Venandi, uh, kind of reminds you of Manundi a little bit, that famous Chris Reeve knife. Not in the look of course, but you know, the name. Really nicely done. It's kind of a single blade trapper design. The handles are black and brown G10 classic tail end uh, treatment to this style of knife. Feels good in the hand. The contouring nestles in nicely and reveals some of those layers of the G10. And you even have a little milled section here to kind of mimic the, uh, the bolster line that you might see on a more traditionally uh, created slip joint. We've got an 8CR series stainless steel blade, uh, about three and an eighth inch long, full height hollow grind going on, hint of a swedge classic slip joint blade shape here as well. Bead blasted finish going on. And that's probably the only thing, only visual clue that this is not a knife that would be three or four times the price. And honestly, everything else is put together super nicely. If it had a satin finish, you might think this was an $80 knife easy. The action, really nice walk and talk. Very cool. You got that excellent half stop going on, bit of a safety feature and just a fun kind of fidgety feature as well. Works really nice. The handles also have some really cool hardware going on. From the backside, you can see it's Torx construction, which is nice. You can kind of take this apart and clean it up if you want to do a little fiddling with it. On the front side, you've got the other end of that hardware is captive because it's not round. You've got this custom shape going on. 
looks really cool. And of course that nice little shield as well. Really nicely done. All right, let's get back to uh, another assisted knife. We've got new versions of the M16. And with this version right here, which they're calling, uh, this is the M1604 DB. Uh, there's also, there's three sizes of this knife, but they're essentially taking Kit Carson's classic M16 design and updating it with their most modern or up-to-date technologies that CRKT has to offer. That torsion bar assist system for one and the deadbolt lock for the other. And that deadbolt is typically a really strong design. You can see here on the back is the shape that gives the deadbolt its name. It's kind of like the deadbolt on your, uh, your lock at home, your door lock. There's two metal bars sticking out of this bar on the back that interface with the tang of the blade and create a really strong lockup. And to unlock it, it's integrated right there with the pivot itself. So it's one less thing on the front of your knife on a knife that happens to have this feature. Really cool. Now you can see there in the section of the handle with the cutout, you can actually see the torsion bar moving around through there. It sits in a little pocket here that is windowed and you can see it moving just into the middle section there as it comes out. So it is open here on the back a little bit, uh, which should help a little bit if you need to flush it out, if you need to like dirt gets in there, you're gonna have to kind of try and wash it out this side. But what's really cool about this assisted system, I mentioned it's not, it doesn't take a ton of, a ton of strength to push it closed. On this particular knife, the uh, almost four inch Tonto bladed version, you can actually flick it closed. That's an assisted system. Normally it would just hit on the, uh, the force that pushes back from the spring and push back out. Not so in this case, at least on the, the large one, there's enough mass on the blade you can get it moving past that system. But the first hit there, you saw what I'm talking about. As for the rest of the knife, black aluminum handles, D2 blade steel on these guys. We've got the 3.9 inch version with a Tonto blade here for about 140. Uh, we've also got a three and a half or 3.6 inch spear point version for about 120 and a smaller Tonto, uh, the 3.12 inch, also about 120 right now. This one right here, I can't really get it to do that close. It's a little bit, not enough mass behind the blade essentially to get it moving past that, but still very easy to get past that push back from the spring and opens up really nicely. All right, next up, if you like that big Tonto version right here, but want something more affordable, check out the M1604 SS. Slimmer handle, as you can see, this is actually gonna be one of those big knives that carries easily, very easily in the pocket due to the slimmer nature. But that assisted version is gonna give you more girth to hold on to. Same profile on the blade, 3.9 inches, 12C27 Sandvik steel here, that Swedish steel. I'm a big fan of, honestly. I like it in the, uh, the budget range of things. I like it better than the 8CR series stuff, hands down really finely grained stuff, takes a really nice edge, holds it well enough, and you got a good amount of toughness as well. Plus it's stainless, it just works exceptionally well, I think. And this guy right here for this large knife, just about 50 bucks right now. Stainless steel for the handles, nice and slim as I mentioned, frame lock going on, and we've got a four position pocket clip, so you can carry it up, down, left, or right, no problem. The uh, assisted deadbolt versions, left or right, but tip up in either case, since only a two position clip on those guys. Let's just appreciate how that folds up. I dig that. Oversized pivot here at the front and washers in the pivot here. No ball bearings to get gummed up with, uh, with dirt or grime, but it still flips really well. Really cool work or tactical knife in this price range. All right, we've got one more uh, deadbolt assisted knife this year, the James Williams designed. I have to look at it because it's a lot of uh, syllables here. Inazuma no Ken, flipper, uh, 120 bucks. D2 blade steel here again, 3.68 inches on the length with that narrow tapering kind of Tonto profile going on. The deadbolt button here itself is a little bit smaller. And again, blends in nicely to the rest of the G10 handles here. This is another one, not enough mass on the blade to close it but still a very easy assisted knife to close one-handed. No problems whatsoever there. Again, thanks to that 
lessened amount of force required to close it. Flipper tab flips open really nicely. Again, tail mounted pocket clip, which is reversible, deep carry. The more knives out there with this clip on it, the better as far as I'm concerned. This guy fills up the hand pretty nicely as well, but the blade is not like a super chunky, super beefy or oversized thing. You still have a nice, easily controlled, reasonable shape and very easily controlled indeed, thanks to that handle design. All right, next up, a fixed blade with a similar blade profile, in fact, and about the same size as well, but overall much smaller package. The Allen Foltz Minimalist, we now have the Katana version right here. 3.56 inch blade, trailing point Tonto, compound grinds. We've got hollow ground, really high hollow ground section here at the back. So the metal behind the edge itself feels pretty thin and it stays nice and thin higher up the blade as well. So you should have a long amount of usable thin edge on that back section. And then the front section is flat ground for a little bit more durability, but it's still not a overbuilt chunky grind. You've got plenty of slicing capability built into the tip right there. The blade steel is 8CR stainless, a nice upgrade uh, from the older versions of this particular knife, which came with, I think, 5CR typically. Handles, resin infused fiber. It's kind of like layered micarta. Feels really good under the hand. It's kind of an iconic color for this knife at this point. And you've got that braided fob at the end combined with three big finger guards means this is a smaller knife that you really can't have a solid hold on. Very little chance of this kind of getting away from you when you're cutting through some bigger jobs. Great little cardboard cutter right here, I think too. As far as the sheath, you probably know what to expect if you're familiar with this series from before. Simple uh, injection molded, clicks in, similar to Kydex, you've got a strap or a, uh, a lanyard here from Paracord if you wanna carry this around your neck. You also get an attachable belt loop that allows you to carry it horizontal either cross draw or small your back, that sort of thing. Now, if you wanted some other belt attachment options, like if you wanted to carry it uh, normal style, <laughs> straight up or inverted even, I'd check out Civivi's uh, T-clip. That should help you out with this guy. Or you can throw an ulti clip on there and use it as a pocket fixed blade. Next up, we've got another Allen Foltz knife. This is the Fox, F-A-W-K-E-S, not Fox, like F-O-X. Uh, 5795 for this guy right now. We've got a two and three quarter inch blade, 4116 stainless here. Nice compact clip point shape. Ground really nicely. And I'll say that's something I've really noticed with CRKT last year, especially uh, really started to see this happening and continues now into this year. The grinds really nice, more precise than they've been in the past. Really cleanly cut fuller going on. Really cool. The handles are black and orange G10. We've also got a big ridged G10 backspacer, which gives you a little bit of extra grip. In fact, my tail or uh, pinky and ring finger can feel that a little bit in a standard kind of saber grip here. So you get a little bit of traction for that, even without doing kind of a gorilla grip because it's so small, it's less of a, of a benefit in that regard. Pretty deep carry pocket clip, just with a single screw, which is nice there and it is reversible for lefties as well. Liner lock and yes, that assisted opening. But check out again how easy that is to close. Like I'm barely pushing on it. It, it just wants to go back in. Helps on the action, you barely even notice it when you go to close it. Very cool small knife. Now if you want a small gentlemanly knife, got another option here besides that uh, CEO compact from before. Uh, Eric Oaks designed delineation comes in about $39 right now. And you've got this modified Warren cliff shape with a hollow grind just under that three inch mark, but you've got a decent working blade, or at least it feels that way. You've got a fair amount of uh, thickness. It's not a super thin blade. So you've got some rigidity there, but the hollow grind is going to keep it a little thinner behind the actual cutting edge itself. Stainless steel for the handles tumbled and you've got the blue accents both on the pivot and on the barrel spacers there, which that kind of blue with bare metal look, we can thank the Sabenza for that. It's kind of established as a real classy combination. 
It works really well here for sure. You've got that frame lock. You've got their assisted opening mechanism. You've got a eh, kind of deep carry pocket clip for the right side and really good flipping action overall. As far as feel in the hand, about a three and a half finger grip for me. The smooth or the uh, smooth finish there is not going to feel rough. It's not going to tear up your pants, which especially if we're talking kind of dressier clothes that might not be as rugged as, you know, Carhartts or a pair of jeans, that's definitely gonna be appreciated. All right, next up we have got the Mahawk, a, no, a new Leong Ma design, comes in about 58 bucks right now. And I'd also probably call this a modified Warncliffe blade, a different shape than the delineation we just looked at, but hence the modified uh, nomenclature, perhaps. Uh, D2 blade steel here, 3.2 inches, and pretty deep hollow grind. Similar story to the delineation though too. Thin behind the edge, but decent spine thickness for some strength. We've got a GRN handle, and especially with some of the things we've seen this year, but also from the CEO series, especially last year, and uh, the M40 series last year, that might be two years ago at this point. I think it was two years ago. Even though this is a uh, an injection molded handle, CRKT, I think, does a better job than anyone of making it feel better than just your typical injection molded thing, or making it feel more special, I should say. This one right here has almost a look of a marbled carbon fiber. Really does elevate it a bit, and it gives you a bit of texture to hold on to as well. I really like that. Helping out with that special feel, we've got some custom pivot hardware here, both on the front and the back. Calls to mind the, uh, the much more expensive Leong Ma designs out there. We've also got that ball there on the end of the pocket clip for the retention point, and what's that? Yes, another tail-mounted deep carry pocket clip that is reversible. I love that. Hidden lanyard point there at the back too if you wanted to attach a fob or something. The locking action, we've got that liner lock there, dual liners overall, that easy assisted opening mechanism, good profile when closed, nice action and nice profile when open as well. All right, now for something a little more gentlemanly, or a little less gentlemanly and more working-like, uh, the Lucas Burnley Squid XM, which I believe stands for Extra Medium trying to leave, leave size for an extra large version perhaps in the future, so they didn't want to call this the large, uh, which is kind of cool because this is still, while bigger than the other squids, it's still a very reasonable smallish EDC knife with a blade just under three inches and a price tag of about 45 bucks right now. That blade steel is D2. You've got the black stonewashed finish going on and a hollow grind here versatile spear point shape. It is the squid shape, just kind of lengthened out two, three inches. I really like this. Probably more than any of the other squids. I've never, it's always been a great knife, but it's never really resonated with me personally. This guy, however, I am really digging. G10 for the front handle scale, stonewashed black stainless steel frame lock on the opposite side with a single position folded over pocket clip. Not quite deep carry, thanks to the uh, backspacer that sticks out here, which Actually, I don't know if we have it listed what that is made of, but it feels like it could be aluminum. Uh, it doesn't feel plasticky, so that's pretty cool too. We've got a fairly neutral shape that still manages to have some character to the handle. What that means is it's not gonna look boring to look at, but it is still gonna fit a very wide range of hand sizes. Like most flippers, that, including the ones we've looked at today, you get some finger guard protection from the flipper tab as it sticks down, the liner lock, holds things nice and solid. You've got their assisted opening system here as well for that good action. Just all around great EDC. Carries nicely due to the thin nature, but still gives you plenty to hold on to as you work. All right, these next two, maybe I should have changed the order up a little bit to keep the more gentlemanly things together, but too late now. Uh, next up, we've got a Russ Commer design. This is the Curfew. And this one really does have a little bit of a kind of old school classic custom folder vibe to it. Little bit kind of timeless in a way like that. About 64 bucks for this guy, 8CR steel, bit over three inches. Uh, yeah, like 3.1, so just over. Nice tapering drop point. But the handles really, I think, are what sells this package to me. We've got aluminum bolsters and that white resin infused essentially paper micarta handles here, kind of an ivory color to it. 
very tuxedo like looks nice black backspacer against those two or those uh, dual full length liners just overall a very classic classic gentlemanly look liner lock assisted system flipper tab there opens really nicely it gives you that bit of kind of peace of mind there still plenty to hold on to with this knife this is not kind of a shrimpy gentleman's knife just goes to show you the, the uh, different vibes you can get both of these actually wow you have just a little bit more sharpened edge on uh, on this Russ Commer design but you can go either way with your with your gents knife whatever works for you folded over pocket clip but not deep carry but inset really nicely with flush screws so it's going to be very smooth in and out of the pocket again the tail or the uh, retention spot there sits against that smooth paper micarta even though they're not calling it that really really classy the next one may not be quite as classy but still has a lot of presence and that's a new version of the rip snort the rip snort 2 from Philip Booth coming in at just under 50 bucks right now it's got pretty much the same blade as before I haven't held them up uh, next to each other but it looks the same to me 8 CR stainless about three and a half inches with I, I always struggle I can never remember the right word for this but it's got almost that rhombic geometry and what I mean by that is you've got a full length flat ground swedge and the flat ground portion towards the edge itself creates almost a diamond shape in cross section if you were to continue the uh, the spine side out a little bit really nice shape for a cutting blade especially anything that's going to move kind of through in a curved pattern through some material because you remove drag from a spine like that it's just a very aerodynamics the wrong word but a very dynamic shape as you move through materials like that single position pocket clip right side tip down only but very deep carry also not an assisted knife here but still flicks open really nicely with those thumb studs the handles plenty to hold on to right there even though it tapers towards the back some black stone washed liners injection molded handles with kind of a wood like texture doesn't do as convincing a job fooling you like the uh, Sace did from before that you think that almost might feel like leather this one a little bit less so but it has a good texture to it doesn't feel chintzy and you got this I believe stainless steel inlay on both sides to kind of mimic a bolster look that also gives it a ton of character all right next up we've got some line extensions a new color in the grivery handled provoke series coming in at just under 100 bucks with the 4116 blades and the less expensive handles as opposed to the full stainless steel versions now to unlock this guy you pull back on this tab back towards the spine and you got those two kinematic arms that fold the blade back some really good advantages to this particular kind of system over just a standard pivot on any other kind of folding karambit one the extraction and deployment of the blade can be very fast you use the flush mounted pocket clip here which if you push down lets you slide it into your pocket as you draw the knife you can either use this section on the back here where you have some jimping you can use that as a pocket deployer if you want let that catch the hem of your pocket and it'll push the blade open for you or if you'd rather deploy it manually with your hand you simply hold that as you would a normal karambit push on this end here with your thumb and it pushes that blade straight out so speed is definitely an advantage over some other designs safety is also a pretty good advantage here because if a pivot were to break it's very very unlikely that this would be able to actual physically fold closed on to your fingers which is also quite nice for one thing it just doesn't do that and for the other with your hand on there it kind of keeps it in place a little bit too even if it weren't locking which of course it is you've also got when it is in your pocket if you're a little bit worried you don't have to be because this is a chisel ground knife so the actual sharpened edge itself sits right up next to the other bit of handle material right there so much less likely for it to snag on some things but you could always use the uh, the separately available belt sheath if you'd rather carry it that way so really cool and if you weren't a fan of the bright green or bright orange of before you've got a new option now in this more affordable version of a pretty cool knife all right next up we've got another James Williams design and a small fixed blade this is the SDN which I'm not sure if that stands for anything or not you have to uh, let me know in the comments 
but it's a really cool little just everyday utility fixed blade maybe some backup tactical uses if you need it uh, about 42 bucks for this guy bead blasted 4116 steel the sheath is injection molded clicks in really nicely there's a really good push off point here for your thumb a little bit thicker good jimping going on but it's a three finger knife for most i've got slightly larger than average hands and my fingers aren't skinny either and i can still pretty easily get all three of my fingers in there nice thing about this sheath design is your hand when you draw it you're already fully on the handle itself there's no adjustment required you simply push off with your thumb and you're ready to go now those dual hooks do a great job keeping it in your hand too so it's very it's going to be pretty hard to actually lose your grip on this knife whether you're using it for daily utility stuff or in a kind of self-defense scenario if you need to push it through a cut it's going to be just fine but you can absolutely get some finer pinch grips going on for really good detail work as far as the carry in your pocket itself they give you kind of this metal j hook right here so it and the hardware to attach it i should say even though you don't have it right here so it's very easy to set this up for pocket carry or inside the waistband carry also comes with uh, some paracord if you want to neck carry it and with the slot right here especially this will work with all kinds of other aftermarket accessories like the larger small tech locks and that sort of thing all right next up we've got a fixed blade pretty big fixed blade for crkt the clever girl kukri comes in about 86 bucks right now blade steel is sk5 which i think is a great choice nice and tough which on anything like this that's going to be hacking and thrashing with it you're going to want that extra toughness just under eight inches about seven and three quarter inch blade powder coated so you've got some rust resistance because sk5 of course is not a stainless steel and you've got a stout flat grind on the profile overall and then thickness on that blade speaking of stout we're almost 0.2 of an inch thick so a bit over 3 16 definitely very durable now the handle itself feels a little more designed towards precision rather than outright chopping power to me i might want to see a little more swell here at the back for some retention as you go to swing but to mitigate that a little bit we do have the opportunity to put a forward lanyard on this knife so we've got some b-roll of this uh, from other knives we'll try to insert right here but you put a loop out here put your hand down through it and then grab the handle so if you lose your grip on the knife it just kind of stays there it doesn't go anywhere which is pretty nice those handles are g10 you do have some ridges for grip and it feels pretty nimble and in fact if you wanted to get even finer control you could choke up in the uh, small finger choil area here to do some detail work in a quote-unquote outdoor scenario there are a lot of uh, survival folks that appreciate the utility of a kukri and yes there is a lot of utility to a kukri in that environment or of course you could use it in a tactical scenario this is of course part of their forged by war series designed by veterans this one by austin mclaughlin sheath itself feels nice and solid being a kukri of course you're going to have something like this open backed spine which is kind of necessary to get around the curve but otherwise slides in pretty easily you're not going to get that positive retention because of that open spine however so you do get the snap strap around the handle that connects to a pretty large injection molded belt strap here connected with the hardware to the sheath itself which of course you're going to be able to use your tech locks and that sort of thing thanks to the hole and slot configuration they give you right there all right last but not least we've got another veteran designed knife from the forged by war program this is the ramadi designed by and i'm sorry i'm going to mispronounce your name i am sure darren siroy siroy not sure how you are sir but thank you for your service and thank you for designing this knife for us uh 74 bucks about a four and three eighths inch blade with a hint of recurve going on and should we call that a drop point you know this is one of those blade shapes it's a little hard to, to uh, quantify because you do have a straight section here but it's not quite a straight clip point the way it's kind of rounded over here so we'll call it a recurve drop point for lack of a better word i should say uh, again sk5 steel with the powder coating nice and tough g10 on the handles coyote brown chamfered edges so it's not super blocky even though these are flat but this definitely feels like a knife that's not going to shrink away from being used really hard 
Uh, we're just shy of 3 16 of an inch thick. You've got that saber grind with the flat geometry right here. It's just, man, ready to push, ready to, well, we'll just say push, we'll leave it at that. Sheath, injection molded, but color matched to the G10 handles in this case, rather than black, which some folks might appreciate that. I always like to see some more just not black stuff too, so I dig it. Uh, belt attachment hardware, they went the full Monty on this guy, gave you a dots clip here, which has the whole pattern that's the same as the full size tech lock. It is locking once you get it on your belt, you have to push that up to disengage it. You can move this around to fit exactly your belt the way it works for you. And you can carry it inverted, up or down, horizontal, pretty much any way you wish. All right, that's all I've got to show you for our pre-SHOT Show video of CRKT's 2022 new knives lineup. Some really cool stuff right here. If you wanna see some more new knives for the year, Thomas and I will be in Las Vegas next week checking out all the stuff at the SHOT Show. Make sure you're subscribed and you click that little notification bell if you wanna be the, one of the first to see the new stuff as it goes up from us. In the meantime, if you wanna get your hands on any of these knives, there will be links in the description as always to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there so that you can earn some free money to spend on your next knife when you buy one of these knives today. Don't forget to let me know what your favorites were down in the comments section below. But until next time, I'm David C. Anderson, that's Thomas over there. We'll see you next time.